four, uh, Papa, four stroke kilo. Very good morning to you. This is GB1 GSF. My name is Andrew, and we are operating portable in the county of Essex. Hi, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now, in this video, we're going to take a look at Web Radio Control, a browser based application that lets you use your ham radio station anywhere in the world. And all you need is a device capable of viewing a web page and, of course, an internet connection. Now it supports PC and Mac desktop and Android or OS for mobile. Phone, CW and digital modes are also supported, so you can literally operate as if you were in your shack at home. So as well as controlling your radio, you can also control your antenna switches and rotators, and that's all built into web radio control. All you need to do is have it pre-configured before using. We'll go through some of the software setup and configuration later in the video, but let's first look at its core features and hardware requirements. Now the software which controls everything in your shack will be installed on a Raspberry Pi. Pi versions 2, 3 and 4 with all its variants are supported. The connection between your radio and the Raspberry Pi will depend on the model of transceiver and its available ports. Now for this demonstration I'll be using my ICOM 7300 is it's one of the radio models which requires less external hardware. In fact, to connect the 7300 to the Pi, it just uses one single USB cable, going from the USB port on the rear of the 7300 to a spare USB port on the Pi. Now that single USB cable will carry a virtual serial port for CAT control and also two-way audio for receive and transmit. Now web radio control supports a vast amount of radio transceivers, and on their website, there is a list of models. Other radios which carry serial data and audio over USB will also be able to connect to the Pi, as I do with the 7300. But for those that do not have USB ports, like the older model of radios, then an external USB interface and an RS-232 adapter will be required. However, these days, those parts are extremely cheap to purchase from the likes of Amazon and eBay. Now here is an example of how web radio control would be connected on a radio which did not have a USB connection. As we can see here, a USB to RS-232 adapter and a USB sound card would need to be used between the radio and the Pi. You'll also notice another USB to RS-232 interface which appears to be controlling an antenna rotator. The website also shows a list of supported antenna rotators and if you're using one, then you'll have a screen like this available to you within the browser so that you can control that rotator remotely. Another remote option would be to use an external antenna switch. Again, there is a page dedicated for controlling an antenna switch from within the web radio control software, meaning you could easily change bands if you're using a mono band antenna or if you want to switch between a Yagi and a wire, for example. Now these connections can come from the Raspberry Pi's GPIO pins or via the local area network. And one of the great features of this software is that it has been built with ham radio clubs in mind, meaning there is an inbuilt scheduler where you can request a time slot for access to the station. Now each user, if configured, would have their own login credentials, which they then use to access the remote station from their home or wherever they are. Now, the examples shown in this video are performed over my local area network, but of course you can configure this system to work with dynamic DNS, meaning it could be accessed from the outside world with the appropriate port forward settings made on your router. For club stations that don't have internet at the clubhouse, then of course you could use something like a 4G dongle, which would then provide the internet access. The interface is as shown on the screen, and I'm currently viewing this on a 2K monitor. Radio settings can be adjusted using the slide out panel, so controlling power, mic gain, and compression levels is just a mouse click or tap away. Now, if supported, you'll also see a band scope, so glancing at the waterfall makes it easy to see band activity. When talking, the web browser will use your system default microphone when using a computer. If you're using an Android or iOS device, then of course that will use the inbuilt microphone in the device. But when using a computer, using the keyboard and mouse is extremely easy to control the software. But what about if you're on a tablet or mobile phone? Luckily, there is a spinning VFO, which can be shown by tapping on the round green icon on the bottom right. 
Then just use your finger or whatever part of your body you wish to spin that VFO dial. Of course, changing things like band is just the case of selecting the band option and then selecting the band from the drop down list. You can also use direct frequency entry. So uh, thanks for the call from Charlie Tango. And I did get your name. I uh, was fooling around, uh, so I uh, may need that again. But uh, uh, you have a good day, 7-3. So let's make a QSO. And the first QSO I will make will be using my PC and the Chrome browser. Uh, beautiful signal, plus 10 uh, now. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so if you use the right antenna, it works well. Hi, hi. Uh, M0CQU Mobile GB1 JSS, uh, thanks for getting into the uh, logbook and I wish you a wonderful day, 7-3. GB1 JSS, QRZ. Mike Zero, Delta Quebec Whiskey. Uh, Mike Zero, Delta Quebec Whiskey, very good morning. Yeah, very good morning. You're 5 9 plus 20 here. I'm uh, in a small village called Stone in Buckinghamshire. Very good morning to you. Name here is Matt, Mike Alpha Tango Tango. Matt, do you have a YouTube channel? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Recognise the voice. Uh, yeah, big fan. Love the videos. Uh, keep them going. And uh, maybe talk to you on uh, the uh, yeah, Kiso 100 at some point. Uh, brilliant signal. You're plus 20 this morning. M0DQW. This is GB1 JSS. Uh, well, I'll make your day because I'm actually just recording a video using something called Web Radio Control via my web browser. And I'm recording footage for my next video, so you better watch out for that one. <laughs> Back to you. I will certainly keep a watch out. And it's always good to get the special event call signs uh, and air in as well. GB1 JSS uh, saying 73M0 DQW. Yeah, cheers. Have a good day. Bye bye. Bye bye. This is GB1 JSS QRZ. Okay, so that was using Chrome and my PC on the same network. Now let's try using my mobile phone, which is an iPhone and is going to be running over Wi-Fi, connected on the same network. The room and the space and the, the noise floor is quite low there, Roger. Yeah, fine business there, uh, Mark. And uh, compliments there on the, uh, on the audio and uh, the signal, of course. Fine business on the working conditions. Uh, using quite an aged... Uh, ICOM 756 at this end, uh, 100 watts into uh, a full-size G5RV. I'll leave you with the frequency, many calling you there, Mark. Have a good day, and look forward to the next one with you. Drum Gold 4, Mike, Yankee United. Yeah, cheers, Art, all the best, and uh, nice to put you in the log. Golf 4, Mike, Yankee United, from Mike Zero, United, Tango, Delta. Thank you. Mike Zero, Delta, Quebec, Whiskey. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey, big signal, you're five and nine, Matt. My name is Mark, okay? Yeah, thank you very much, Mark. Yes, you're also five nine plus twenty. Five nine plus twenty into Buckinghamshire this uh, uh this morning. Seventy threes and I uh, hope you have uh, lots of contacts from M Zero DQW. Cheers, Matt. Thanks for calling in and uh, great to put you in the log. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey from Mike Zero United Tango Delta. Thank you. Yeah, cheers. 73, bye-bye. Mike, Mike, uh, bye-bye. Who's the mic, Mike? The mic, Mike? So, using web radio control across your local area network works extremely well, even on devices using Wi-Fi. Now, if you wanted to use this solution remotely via the internet, then it works just as well. However, there is a little bit more configuration that you do need to perform. You will need to have access to your router, which the Pi is connected to. This is so that you can create some port forwards, which forward the data from the remote connection to the Pi, which is connected to the radio. The website shows which ports are required, and these include ports for the configuration page, the user interface, along with ports for the audio streams for receive and transmit. If you're using this solution across the internet, then it's recommended to use a dynamic DNS service, which resolves your wide area network IP address to something more memorable 
like your club call sign as the URL. Now there are some free and paid recommended dynamic DNS services listed on the website. Now let's take a quick look at the install process. You'll first need a license ID to be able to download the latest Raspberry Pi image. There is a free trial which will issue you with a license ID via email. Now once you have your license ID, head to the download page, select your version, always best to use the latest, and then enter your license ID and click download. The download will be a compressed Raspberry Pi image that you'll need to extract and then write to a micro SD card, which we'll put into the Raspberry Pi later. I use Balan Etcher as my tool for writing images to SD cards. Now all these steps are thoroughly detailed on the website and this is a simplified overview. Once you have your image SD card, pop it in the Pi and make sure your radio is connected. Just power on the Pi and the install process will take between five to 10 minutes. After such time, you can log onto the web radio control admin page via a browser on a computer which is on the same network. Obviously, you do need to have your network cable plugged into the Pi as well. You will then be presented with a login screen. The default username and password is listed within the setup procedure on the website. And once logged in, you'll be able to change this to something more personal. You now need to activate the software using the license ID that you acquired earlier, whether it's the trial license or a yearly license. Other items like call sign and installation name can also be entered here before you activate the software. Once activated, you can now set up a domain name and then click the create button, which creates and downloads a TLS certificate. This is so that you can install the certificate on any browser, which will be connected to the Pi so that secure communications can take place, i.e. it uses HTTPS. There are links in the setup process which will help you install the certificate onto your PC if you're not sure how to do this. Now we need to get the device names that the Pi has used to identify the connected radio by clicking list devices. Now for the 7300, it will be one USB COM port and then two audio devices, one for RX and one for Audio TX. You also need to scroll down the supported radio list to find the radio model number ID. Now I copied and pasted all this information to a notepad as we'll need it for the next step. Now the next step is to create a configuration file which contains the device paths we just wrote down. There is a template YAML file that you can download from the website to make things easier. Once downloaded, just open it up in a text editor and start to paste in the information we previously wrote down into the correct locations. Now, a couple of points to mention about the setup and that it's not advised to use the .local domain and when using the system purely locally, set the LAN mode to true. Now, once you have this file configured, save it and then import the configuration file on step four. And once it's saved and activated, that's it. The server will restart and you should now be able to click the domain link, which has the 8012 port number at the end. Just log in with your credentials and select the radio you wish to control. Other features like adding other users or antenna switches or even rotators is all listed in the documentation on the website. GTX, GB1, JSS, thank you very much and uh, 7-3 to you. Uh, thanks for getting into the log this morning. GB1, JSS, QRZ. Well, there we go, guys. That's web radio control. Now, I'll leave a link to the website down in the description below where you can go and check out the different packages that's available. And also, you can request a free trial. Now, it's pretty much instant. You just need to pop in your email address and you'll be emailed a trial license. Anyway, guys, stay safe. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.